Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by these great sponsors. Axon started out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. Imagine having 100 years of tire and wheel knowledge in your back pocket the next time you sell a piece of ag equipment. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800 800- 657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. No matter how you buy your ag equipment, whether it's from a dealer, an auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment sales data. TractorZoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and auctionable pricing insights. This podcast is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. The Dealer Connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management is an affordable Salesforce-based solution for your dealership. Create connected customer experience and transform how you work. Moving higher in the 21st century. Hard-working people working hard for you and me Moving higher time and time again Through the years you'll find us here Moving higher Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast Markets with Chip Nellinger. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Axon Tire, helping dealers move more iron. For the past 100 years, for more information, go to axontire.com. If you would like to get a free pair of deer skin leather work gloves, go to send an email to marketing at axontire.com, and they will send you a free pair in your into the mail, and they'll get them to you. Just tell them Moving Iron, Pod, Moving Iron Podcast sent them to you. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs at Valley Transportation. Our goal is to help you reach yours. No matter how you buy your ag equipment, whether it's from a dealer, an auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment sales data. TractorZoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and auctionable pricing insights. This podcast is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks, their Dealer Connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management as an affordable Salesforce-based solution for your dealership create connected customer experience and transform how you do your work today. Chip is with, uh, uh, man, Chip, I almost forgot who you're with there for a minute. Blue Reef Agri Market out of Morton, Illinois. Chip, it's nice to come on and talk about what's happening in the marketplace. Chip, how you been, man? Oh, I'm doing well, Casey. How about you? Oh, doing doing better than me, it sounds like. I, uh, I don't know. I, I was, was thinking about those you. Deer skin leather work gloves. I mean, that's kind of an oxymoron. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do much work in a deer skin leather glove. They keep your hands better soft that way. So I guess so, man. That sounds nice. Yeah. I might have to I might have to forge your name on there and my address. Have them send me a pair. <laughs> just just send a uh no, I gotta send an email. I'm working at axontire.com. I'll get you some right there in the mail. Okay. I'm gonna do that. There you go. They have a couple of weeks. Wait, I'll wear wait. them on the podcast and I'll show them off. There you go. Well, in a couple of weeks, you're probably going to need them where you're at because you're you're bumping up against November and that November weather in the uh, Midwest and where we're at here now is is creeping up on that time where we're looking for that first snow chip. So I guess taking a look at what's going on right now, how how is harvest going in your area? Um, it seems like the weather's really cooperating for the most part across the uh, the entire Corn Belt. So I guess what are some of the reports you're hearing out there? Yeah, it, it really has been, um, <clears throat> you know, an ideal fall so far. It's been going a little bit slow. A lot of people have been finishing up beans in here. <clears throat> um, right where we're at, kind of the, you know, uh, called the Interstate 74 corridor that kind of runs from the Quad Cities uh, all the way over to Indianapolis, uh, right through Peoria here. Uh, it's kind of the cutoff. You get south of here and, and they've had, uh, you know, they're a lot further along. You get an hour north of here. And they're just kind of finishing up beans um, and getting a start on corn. We had two hard frosts in a row here earlier. You talk about the weather. It's been a little bit crazy. Uh, we actually did have some snow that um, didn't stick around, but it it kind of stuck a little bit. Uh, earlier this week, we got down into the upper 20s. And uh, here tomorrow, we're going to be up uh, near 80. So uh, Mother Nature is, uh, you know, kind of throwing us a little bit of a curveball. But uh, harvest is moving along. 
Yields have been uh, really good. Uh, people are pretty pleased with their bean yields um, and, you know, really pleased with corn yields uh, around here. So corn, um, you know, coming off uh, slowly drying down. I think these frosts that we've had maybe going to, um, you know, help move that along a little bit. Um, so it's uh, it, it, it's going, but it, it's going to be a, a slow process. Still a lot of corn out there. <clears throat> the river now is kind of messed up with the Mississippi yeah. River situation, backing everything up, um, you know, upstream, so to speak. And uh, so a little bit of a problem right now because a lot of places aren't taking beans. There are still just a few beans left in the field. Uh, a lot of places aren't taking beans, kind of running out of storage. Uh, so we're getting, uh, you know, some logistical problems because of the Mississippi River. But uh, harvest is moving along. Still going to be uh, a few weeks here. I mean, there's a lot of people in the northern third of Illinois won't be finished up till uh, closer to Thanksgiving. So it's uh, it's been a slow slow process here, but uh, big yields overall. Right on. So the Mississippi River thing, the ripple effects that you're going to see across that. Do you expect to see some increase in basis because of that, or do you feel like that's just going to work itself out as as more train traffic or whatever gets stuff to to ports further south and in, in, on the west coast? Yeah. So, so some of, some of all of the above, it's, it's really a strange year, um, in a lot of different ways. Um, a, you have the whole drought situation in the, in the Southern plains, you know, through the panhandle, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, that area, uh, you know, just a, really a corn deficit, corn in, in all feed, um, a deficit this year, you got the Mississippi river, uh, obviously lowest levels uh, ever <clears throat> over here and, and, you know, all up the upper Mississippi, it really has affected basis. Uh, I mean, we've seen basis, you know, um, worsen by uh, 40 to 60 cents over the last three weeks as they had these uh, problems on the Mississippi river. It's really strange over here. I, I couldn't figure it out for a minute. And I think I, I have it figured out a little bit. <clears throat> so our processor market, uh, the ethanol side is still really strong. So I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what the, with the rivers, you know, weakened up by 30 40 50 cents why is the ethanol market so strong i think part of it is the the train volume they're not getting the train corn that they normally would it's uh because of the logistic situation it's moving to uh the the plains and it's bypassing these eastern corn belt um you know ethanol facilities which normally would be getting train corn in the train corn's moving further west and so that leaves the ethanol plants scrambling a little bit so uh, it's a very dynamic situation uh, and, and a little bit of a head scratcher. So we've definitely seen the Mississippi River um, worsen up the basis in a lot of areas. The problem now is I don't see a real quick fix with that. Um, you know, you look at the most recent drought map. I mean, we have a serious problem developed here. It, it doesn't necessarily matter right now for corn and beans, but this coming spring and summer, if uh, – if we don't see some relief there, it, it's it's really going to affect things. And it's already affecting things on the wheat side. Um, you know, the, the Southern Plains just, they just get, hey, what is this, the fourth, going on the fourth year in a row? I mean, they just uh, can't buy a break down there. Yep. So speaking on the wheat thing, that was next thing I was going to come to you at. Looking at this whole Black Sea um, passage of of safety for uh you know ukraine to get products out of the black sea that's set to expire here in november um you know yesterday russia was like ah, i don't know if i mean what i don't know if we're going to do this or not and then we're not going to uh, redo it or not and then you got turkey's president uh Erdogan coming out saying hey don't worry about it there's no reason that this won't happen we're going to make things happen things are good to go how is the market reacting to that information? Because it feels like they've got some of it baked in, and then there's some of it that are pretty sure that you know what this is this is going to happen, so we're going to keep trading this way. What's some of the some of the feel you're getting from that that kind of news coming out of the Black Sea? Yeah, I think it's contributing to uh, this yo-yo action that you see in in wheat. You know, over the, uh, yeah. the past couple months, we've seen a two dollar rally in wheat, and then here in the last yep. three weeks, we've seen a dollar break in wheat. Uh, you get multiple stories on that daily. I think the market's getting a little bit weary of it. Um, I'm surprised that the whole export corridor happened to begin with. Um, oh, I would have yeah. bet a lot of money that never happened. Um, I think it's, uh, my brain tells me that it would be easy to not renew that agreement. So I think the market's waiting. 
um, to, for more information. And uh, it, it's going to greatly affect corn and wheat. Um, you know, the, the weird thing is it's, it's bouncing this wheat market around daily with this. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Yeah. But um, quite honestly, they've, they've exported more corn out of there than, than wheat. And um, so it's going to affect both of those markets in a big way. And I, I just don't know which way it's going to go. I don't, I get a sense over the last two weeks that, you know, this Russia's has taken a, a much more aggressive stance. They're now bombing, uh, you know, civilian uh, targets again. They, they bombed, um, you know, some export uh, and, and sunflower crush facilities uh, that really got the soy oil market fired up. So it's going to greatly affect the markets, but it's an absolute coin toss right now as to whether that thing's going to uh, be renewed or not. And, um, you know, it's really causing a lot of volatility because it's, it's exactly like you said, you know, one day it's, it's on the next day it's off Turkey's sitting there trying to broker the deals, you know, and now they're going to get a huge, uh, uh, natural gas, uh, export hub, uh, from a pipeline uh, coming out of Russia. So, yeah. You know, there's a lot of self-interest that's happening um, in a lot of different uh, ways yeah. right now that's driving this yeah. thing, and it's hard to predict. Yeah, very much so. Um, <clears throat> ship over to take a look at the hog market real quick. So China's made – they've kind of pulled the curtain back a little bit. They're, they're, they're talking about, you know, they've got a, a, an incredibly high hog price right now inside of China. I mean, because obviously their supply is not where it's at. They're telling their – their uh, farmers say sell more hogs, sell more hogs, sell more hogs, and they can't sell more hogs because they don't have any more hogs to sell. Um, they're just clamoring for more for more pork, more pork to hit the markets, those kind of things. How much longer do you think that is before the Chinese just come in and buy a whole bunch of of, of U.S. hogs as much as they don't want to? Well, very quietly, Casey, uh, for five six weeks now, they've been back into. Uh, you know, buying U.S. pork, uh, not to the size they were, say, <clears throat> six, nine uh, months ago, but they have very quietly been in there every week for U.S. pork. So uh, I think that's part of the reason that uh, our hog market has, has taken off. A, we haven't expanded as, as much because of labor and, you know, construction costs sure. and the inflation right. there. So we haven't uh, expanded our numbers here. And I, I think this, um, you know, export demand has been pretty good and China has been a big part of that. So <clears throat> you can probably go back to the whole uh, ASF thing. And, you know, they said, oh, we've rebuilt our hog herd. Everything's great. Obviously, you know, you can't believe anything um, uh, or shouldn't believe anything that leaves their mouth uh, over there as it relates to the markets or anything, really. And, and so likely they just, you know, they, they didn't build back the hog herd as much as they wanted the world to believe or or. B, they're still having uh, ASF issues over there, or maybe a combination of both. So I think it's a big deal, and, and we've seen a big a big rally in hogs, um, partially because of that, uh, partially because the cash markets, uh, you know, come back to life. You got next summer hogs, you know, back over a hundred bucks, um, really pretty historic high levels, and you know that's maybe one of the bright spots in uh, uh, in the ag world right now is uh, this hog market, um, you know for the next year looks pretty good because supplies are going to be pretty tight and, you know, uh, call it kind of the recession proof, uh, you know, protein source, because it's generally a little bit cheaper. And if you still have that export demand in the rest of the world, Mexico uh, has been a big buyer. China's still been in there. And, uh, I think the hawk market, not that it's, it's proved we're going to have 10, $15 swings, uh, throughout this thing. It's going to be a roller coaster, but um, fundamentally, uh, the hog market looks pretty bullish out in here, especially out in the next summer. Yep. So cattle on feed report comes out today. Um, that cattle, cattle on feed report the last couple of weeks has been, has been very, very friendly to the market. We can see with the number of, of actual head out there that, that are being, um, being processed through the system, you know, start looking at, at slaughter numbers and what that looks like. And each week, they seem like they get a little more than what the week before. Um, cattle prices staying high. We're seeing, you know, we saw some sharp drop offs last week, but I mean, we've seen a nice rebound back this week, Chip. So looking at that cattle market, 
what are your thoughts there? And and rebuilding that herd is going to take a long time from where, what it's been depleted down to. Yeah, it really is. And and we're we're not to the end of the liquidation phase yet on the breeding stock. Unfortunately, <clears throat> we're going to need to see that. now. One bright spot is that uh, there are, there are some rains on tap for portions of the of the Panhandle yeah. up through Oklahoma and Kansas. So uh, one rain's not going to fix three years of drought, uh, but maybe that's a step in the right direction. Um, so I, I think more of the same for the cattle on feed. Um, you know, I, I think the numbers are probably going to be on the high side. I think it's something with uh, the the liquidation of the breeding stock for the last couple of years has kept more pounds of meat on the market. It's probably held us, even though we've had a nice rally, you know, we're sitting here in the mid to upper 150s out here in the winter and spring um, contracts. And um, if we can, it's a big if, <clears throat> if we can get some better rain, get pastures healed up a little bit and get people restocking, um, you know, the cow herd, that's when things get really bullish out there. You would have, my, myself included, I would have thought that would have happened by now, but unfortunately the drought's still there. Um, hopefully these rains they're supposed to get, uh, or maybe the start of some, some better moisture, uh, coming and, and, uh, again, just like the hog market, um, you know, you can make an argument that uh, things look really friendly for the, for the cattle side out there. Um, we got this potential recession that we've got to deal with. Um, we're likely already into one, although, you know, it, it might be six more months before they finally officially say, uh, oh, we're in a recession. Um, but it's, it's, it's already out there most likely. And, and so we got to get through that, but livestock sector, other than high feed costs, obviously that's a problem. Uh, things look uh, really pretty friendly out there to me, fundamentally, um, at this stage of the game of both hogs and cattle. Right on, man. There's a lot of stuff going on, uh, on that protein side for sure. So, well, Chip, hey, good stuff as usual. Folks want to reach out to you and get more information about what it is that you've got going on at Blue Reef Ag Market. What's the best way to do that? Yeah, best way is just call our office, 309-550-7213. And uh, we'd love to chat with you. I know it's a busy time of year with harvest, but uh, if you're sitting in the tractor wondering about the markets and what your risk management plan uh, should be, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to chat with you. Right on. A lot of moving parts in the uh, market right now, especially when you start looking at dollar strength and Inflation. I've never, I've never wow. seen, Man, I've crazy. never seen so many moving parts. It, it really is, it really is challenging out there. I, it seems like I say that every year, but it, it just uh, outside markets, the dollar and crude oil and you know, the war going on and recession and a lot of things outside of just supply and demand and fundamentals of grain and livestock markets are really pushing and pulling right now. Yeah. So make sure you get a hold of Chip. Talk about that plan because. You need one right now, especially heading into prepaying and looking at your input costs for next year. There's a ton of moving parts there. So, Chip, appreciate you being on the podcast, man. You bet. Thanks for having me on, Casey. All right on. I'm Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. You can also go to LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast and check out the Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel where you can see the video version of this very podcast live and at your fingertips right there. So with that, uh, for more information, go check out moving9loc.com for everything moving iron related. I know it seems like it's a fair bit away, but September will be here before you know it. September 11th through the 13th is the uh, Moving Iron Summit, in Nashville, Tennessee. The good people at Axon have uh, offered to pay $50 of your registration fee by just simply putting in Axon when you guys check out there. So if you're interested in doing that, very, very worthwhile doing that. So with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Chet Nelger. It's going to be smart, folks. Out. Axon started out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. Imagine having 100 years of tire and wheel knowledge in your back pocket the next time you sell a piece of ag equipment. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. No matter how you buy your ag equipment, whether it's from a dealer, an auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment sales data. 
Tractor Zoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and auctionable pricing insights. This podcast is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. The Dealer Connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management is an affordable Salesforce-based solution for your dealership. Create connected customer experience and transform how you work. Moving higher in the 21st century.